Hi, hello, and welcome in our video. In this video, we will be talking about a very important feature in Dorse Next. We will be talking about baselines. So what are baselines? Baselines in IBR Dorse Next are snapshots or frozen versions of requirements artifacts at a specific point in time. Baselines capture all artifacts, folder trees, and public tags, so you can view them as a complete set of requirements, their associated attributes, and their relationships that will provide you a stable reference for future comparison, for future analysis, and change management. Baselines enables you or your team to preserve the integrity of requirements and establish a clear point of reference during the project lifecycle. Baselines are great, they are a kind of checkpoint that will give you the peace of mind of knowing that you can always return to see what your project information looked like at that specific point in time when you created this baseline. You can use baselines in many different ways. For example, you can use a baseline to analyze and discover changes to your current requirements artifacts, or you can use baselines to compare and see where and how your project has changed from one milestone to the next. When you create baselines to preserve the state of requirements at a specific time, then you can track and trace changes throughout the project using those baselines. Or when you want to review and analyze changes to your project information, or if you just want to know what has happened to a particular requirement, you can access all prior baselines and see what modifications have taken place. Comparing baselines can give you important insight about how your project progressed over time, and it enables you to track what, where, when, and how was changed. Another important thing is that baselines play a crucial role in configuration management because they provide you a baseline configuration that can be used as a starting point for a new project or as a basis for future modification. They establish a consistent and controlled environment for managing requirements. That's why when you are creating a new stream from an existing stream, this new stream is created from a baseline. Even though you didn't create any baseline yourself, this baseline was created automatically and it serves as a starting point for this new stream. Another thing to consider is that you may need baselines to support regulatory compliance or certification processes or both internal and external audits. It is very important to note that the decision to create a baseline should be based on your project-specific needs. To ensure the consistency and effective management of requirements throughout the project lifecycle, it is essential to establish clear guidelines and criteria, and not just for baseline creation, but also for things like baseline's naming convention. So when I am supposed to create a baseline? Well, as I said, it depends on your use case or your project. But you may create a baseline at significant milestones or at significant project phases, so you can capture the evolving state of requirements. Your specific milestones may be less significant, such as after every sprint or every iteration, or they may be more significant, such as the completion of major deliverable or at the end of development iteration. So create baselines whenever you need to mark important checkpoints in the project progressions or whenever you need to allow for tracking changes and conducting impact analysis. Yet another reason to create baseline may be requirements freeze. In certain cases, it may be necessary to freeze requirements at a specific stage, especially when they are entering a critical phase such as review or system testing or regulatory compliance. So then you need to create a baseline at those points to ensure that the requirements remain unchanged and provide a reference for future comparison and validation. And the last reason I mentioned to create a baseline may be before releasing a product or before creating a new version of software. Because it is important to create baselines that capture the requirements and associated artifacts for that specific release. This baseline will serve as a reference for future maintenance, for future bug fixes, and for version management. So, as I mentioned, it's very important internal discussion when to create baseline, but you should also discuss how those baselines should be named. It is very important to adopt a standardized naming convention for baselines to provide clarity and ease of identification. And I cannot stress this enough because when you will have hundreds of baselines, you need to identify them easily. So you should include all relevant details such as the version, release, or milestone, anything that can enhance traceability and understanding. 
You can also accompany each baseline with some appropriate documentation, including some release notes or change logs or relevant context. So what I am trying to indicate is that although the topic of baselines is very easy from theory and practice perspective, it is extremely important part of requirements management lifecycle, and that's why it will take you just a couple of minutes to understand the topic, but tens of hours to create internal processes and conventions to describe who, why, when, and how should create baseline, and with what name. All right, that was the theory. Let's now focus on hands-on. Now I am in any generic stream. First, what I would like to show you is that when you are creating new stream, the baseline will be created automatically. So I will navigate up here and I will create new stream. I am not creating baseline, I am creating second stream. Excellent. I created a stream and now I will navigate back to the previous stream. So training project initial stream. And here I will click on local configuration. And you see, this is the baseline, the baseline for second stream initial baseline. So, as I mentioned in the theory part, as soon as you are creating new stream, when you are branching out, then although you are not creating baseline manually, you are creating just a stream, this baseline is created automatically. Perfect. Now, let's navigate to our second stream and let's create some changes here. So, I will explore stream. I will go to artifacts and I will change something in a module. For example, I will find system requirement specification and I will change this artifact, delete this artifact, add one artifact, for example, system requirement. And I can also go back and create some folder. OK, so I made some changes and now we can create another baseline. And although I am saying another baseline, this will be in fact our first baseline created manually. So to create baseline, navigate up here to the right and click on create baseline. Then give it some name and click on create. OK, perfect. So you don't see the baseline because we are still in the second stream. But when I click on this stream and I click on switch, you can search for baseline by typing star and this is my baseline okay so this is one way you see the icon change and now we are in baseline and you also have a notification artifacts in a baseline cannot be changed perfect so you see everything in baseline is frozen i can navigate to parameters but i am not able to create anything i am not able to delete anything everything is grayed out i am not able to do anything here i am not able even to create or save a view i am able to work with for example columns or i am able to create filter but i am not able to save this filter save this view so you cannot do any change here and you cannot save any change here one more thing I would like to show you before we jump to another example is how can you navigate to baseline in a little different way. So I will jump back to the stream. And here in a stream, you can click here and see you have different options here. And one of those options is baselines. So you see every baseline for this stream. You can click on this baseline and click on explore baseline and you are back in a baseline. So this is a different way how can you navigate to your baseline. Okay, now I would like to show you how can you use baselines to trace the changes. To do that, you can navigate up here and click on compare configuration. And you see you can select streams or baselines. If you will select streams, you can compare what was done a stream and what are the differences between stream and baseline. Or you can compare two baselines together, and that's what I would like to show you right now. So I will click on baselines, I will click on star and search or baselines, and you see this is my current baseline and this is previous baseline. So I would like to see changes between those two baselines. I will click on this one and click on OK. Oh, here at the first glance it looks like nothing changed, but it's not about component content. 
but it's about component properties. And yes, component properties didn't change. So if you would like to see changes, click on next. And here you see change in a folder structure. So I created a new folder in the second baseline. Excellent. You can go and click on next. And here you see that you have one new artifact that we created. But also we have some changes here. And you can see that this artifact, blue one, was changed. This my work part is missing in a new baseline. Also, this new artifact was created. And also, this image is no longer here. So you can see all changes here in this view. And you can also create a report. So you can include component properties, folders, artifacts, change set, anything. And you can output it in PDF or Word. So I will use PDF. OK, it's done. And in this report, you can see all changes here, but in a little less user-friendly way. So you can see all changes. Every change is a separate small change set. And for example, I will scroll down. And here you can see that we created new folder. I will also scroll down. Here you see that we created new artifact with some default values. And also you see that we changed some artifact. You see change last modified date. And you also see that this part was deleted. So you see those changes not just here, but you can also generate a separate report to document all changes in Word or PDF. All right, so that was comparison between two baselines and we can close it and I will jump back to the stream. Right now, this stream is the exact same configuration as our previous baseline because I didn't change anything in this stream, but right now I would like to change this stream. So I will delete the folder I created. So I will find it, it's here. I will delete this folder, perfect. I will go to module again. I like system requirement specification and I will delete this newly created artifact. I will add big change here. And I will also add some artifact, for example, here. Perfect. So it's a little different from what I deleted already. Excellent. So I am in a stream. Now I would like to compare what are the change between what I have in a stream with previous baseline. So clicking on the stream, I can compare configuration. I can go to baselines and select my baseline. OK. And the process is the same. I will click on next. You see I deleted folder. Excellent. Next. And you see only in second stream. We have some artifacts, so this new artifact here is just on the second stream. And also both are but different, you see those changes. So this artifact changed, this artifact was created, and this artifact was deleted. Excellent. The last thing I would like to show you is how can you sign baseline with electronic signature. To sign baseline with electronic signature, navigate up here and click on second stream or your local configuration. Here, select baselines and click on baseline you would like to sign. All right. And here you see you have electronic signatures. So you can add electronic signature, use your user ID with your password. You can pre-create some reasons for signing and you can also add comments. Perfect. So I can add OK. And you see, I added electronic signature. This baseline was signed by Igor Admin. All right. And this is the last thing I wanted to show you in this video. You see, this is another very easy topic where theory and practice are much easier than real life implementation into internal processes and project lifecycle. So I really hope this video was informative for you and I look forward to see you in our next videos.